people of the internet, I'm Jantje and I give complicated answers to simple questions. Now, you might say, wow, that's crazy, why would you purposefully want to complicate things? What is wrong with you? To which I would say, what do you mean, what is wrong with me? Are you saying I am not normal? Well, we are going to find out. noticed in my little example, in our everyday lives we tend to classify things as normal and not normal quite a lot. Except most of the time our idea of what normal is is actually extremely subjective. Now you might say, are you trying to tell me I don't know what normal is? I know what normal is. I have been normal my whole life. Let's start at the beginning. Normal is a pretty versatile word and an even more versatile concept. But there are three main ways in which we might be able to define whether something could be normal or not. First of all, there's the statistical norm. The statistical norm is quite straightforward. The idea is simply that normal is wherever the majority is. Except, wait, where exactly is the majority? Where does it end? And can't we postulate that there must always be a more extreme example and therefore the boundaries of what is normal can actually be stretched infinitely far and at the same time can't we define normalcy so infinitely exact that normalcy itself becomes unobtainable? Well, yes, that's the point. But what about situations that can't be accurately described on a bell curve? Take for example operating systems of computers. Now most computers in the world run Windows, but is a computer running Apple or Linux therefore defective and in need of fixing? Your computer is running Linux and you need to fix that. Well, that's where we'll find another definition of normal, which is the technical definition. According to the technical definition, something is normal if it works as expected. A computer, whether whatever operating system it may run, is normal as long as it works as expected. Now, imagine, for example, a computer that won't turn on if the temperature is less than 10 degrees. If you're only using the computer inside, you might not notice that it can do that at all. However, if you live in Iceland and you plan on using the computer outside in the winter, then it's essentially broken. So, is the computer broken or is it not? Have we discovered some sort of Schrodinger's cat situation where we don't find out if the computer is broken or not until we take it outside? This is where we'll find the third definition of normal, which is the societal norm. According to the societal norm, something is normal if the society observing considers it normal. So, for example, the society of indoors computer users will consider the computer, for my example, as normal whereas the Society of Icelandic Outdoors computer users will consider it as not normal and essentially broken. But that of course doesn't really say anything about whether there's actually something wrong with the computer from a technical or engineering point of view. The m computer might simply not have been built to withstand low temperatures. And we don't know if all if the majority of computers doesn't withstand low temperatures or if it does. So this shows that each of the definitions have their own strengths and weaknesses. Now you might have noticed that in the beginning of the video I went out of my way to use normalcy in terms of a health and sickness or health and disorder paradigm. That is because the same definitions of normal essentially also apply when we're talking about health. And that's generally all well and fine, except because we're using multiple methods to define what health is, the concept of health can become difficult to define in ways other than an absence of sickness. But sickness, of course, depends on where you draw the line between sickness and health. So, especially, but not exclusively, when we're talking about mental health, there is not really a clear concept of what health is. And so when it comes down to it, health can basically be just a point of view, which is why we can disagree about it so much. So health, like normalcy, is in the end a social construct. 
But before you go yell at me how your pain is not imaginary, here's the thing about social construct. Being a social construct does not make something not exist. For example, language is a social construct. This is a pillow. This is a pillow because you and I agree that this is a pillow. I could disagree and say this is a kiss and not a pillow, but then we couldn't communicate because we'd be disagreeing on everything. But the fact that language is a social construct doesn't negate that this is a pillow. The pillow hasn't stopped existing because I've called language a social construct. And essentially, that's what people often forget when we talk about social construct. Something being a social construct doesn't make it not exist. So, health being a social construct doesn't actually invalidate that someone might experience pain or unwellness. It simply defines how we, as a society, choose to treat people who do. So, with this short excursion on pillows, I'm going to end this video. However, I'm going to continue to talk about health next week, because I also want to look into some of the cultural ideas that we have about the concept of health and how they influence uh, our, our ideas of disability and mental health. So I'd be very happy if you would stick around for that and consider to subscribe so you won't miss it and of course also comment and like and uh, share this video if you have liked it and if I've made you think about something even if it's just pillows and I will see you next week. Bye!